All right, we're back. So again, remember when we had the, those relationship between sine, cos, and tan with y, x, and r, when theta is in quadrant one? So example, here it is. What if theta is equal to angles, special angles, such as 0, 90, 180, and 270? Those do not form a right angle with the immediate x-axis, but we can find out special relationship with those if we use the x, y, and r principle. All right, so for example, let's look at zero degrees. That we mark in red. 90 degrees we mark in yellow. 180 we'll mark in green. And 270 we'll mark in blue. So in order to determine the values, we need to do have the coordinates at the end of all those radi radii. So at the end of the red radius, the coordinates on the x-axis would be x0. The At the end of the uh, radius that is yellow, we find the coordinates to be 0, y. Uh, at the end of the green radius, we find out the coordinates are negative x0 because again, don't forget, we're going left, so the it's not the length, but the coordinates, which is negative x and 0. Finally, at the end of the blue one, we would have the coordinates, sorry, 0, negative y. At the end of the blue one, we would have the coordinates 0, negative y. So as long as we know those values, we can continue on. So we're going to copy this and have a new screen with the exact same item. Here they are. We need to find the sine of 0. In order to do that, we're going to take the si find the sine of 0. Now, this is the part that I find that students don't understand. We got to the part before where sine of 0, sine of something, is equal to y over r. Now, we change the something to 0. And we still use the concept of y over r. What is the length of r? Now, look at the red particular uh, radii, the radius, and we need to know the length of this line right here. In order to find this length, we need to look, examine the coordinates and determine the length of this line. Hopefully, you can see that the length of the red particular radii here, the radius, is actually just x. So that's where that x came from. So when we represent the uh, y over r, y in this coordinate that we're looking at is 0. Notice the coordinate for the red, the y is 0, and the r is x. What is 0 over x? Well, the answer to that is 0. So sine of 0 is 0. Cosine of 0 is x over r x is x, r is x, so what is x over x, folks? That is equal to 1. Now, tan of 0. Tan of 0 is equal to y over x. What's y, folks? Well, that was 0. What's x? It's x. What's 0 divided by x? The answer is 0. So, sine of 0 is 0, cos of 0 is 1, and tan of 0 is 0. Let's go to the next one. What happens if we replace it with the 90 degrees? So we're looking at the yellow now. So one more time, we look at 90 degrees, and that means we need to look at the, y, the yellow uh, radius, and we find out what is the length of this yellow radius. Well, we go 0, 0 to 0, y, so logically, the length of the yellow axis is y. So we take the sine of 90, cosine of 90, and tan of 90, and determine the value. Again, using the same idea of y over r, x over r, and y over x. So the first one, sine of 90, y over r, is equal to y over y. So sine of 90 is equal to 1. Cosine of 90 is equal to x over r. x is 0, 
r is y, so 0 over y is just 0. Finally, 10 of 90. 10 of 90 is y over x, and you find out that when you replace it, it'll be y over 0. y over 0, as we all know, folks, we can't divide by 0, so the answer is undefined. All right, we move forwards on to 180 degrees. So, at 180 degrees, we determine, we need to determine the value of the particular axis. So, what is the length of the green axis, folks? Well, it goes from 0, 0 to negative x, 0, but we just need the length of that axis. And the length of the green axis is just positive x. You can't have negative length, folks, so that's why it's positive x. When you determine the sine of 180, you're going to determine y over r. In this case, y is 0 and over x. 0 over x is just 0. Cosine of 180, you want to determine x over r. x is negative x and r is x. What's negative x over x? Well, the answer to that is negative 1. 10 of 180, you determine y over x. y is 0, x is negative x, 0 over negative x is always going to be 0. All right, so now we've determined the sine, cos, and tan of 180. Let's change it for the last one. Now we're looking for the sine, cos, and tan of 270. If we look at the blue radius, you can see that the length of the blue radius is not negative y, it is y. Remember that length cannot have a sign attached to it. So, sine of 270 is equal to y over r, which is equal to negative y over y, which is equal to negative 1. Cosine of 270 is equal to x over r. x is 0. r is y. 0 over y is just 0. Finally, tangent of 270 is equal to y over x. y is negative y. R is 0, so therefore we have the, uh, it undefined at 10 of 270. All right, folks. That's all the special angles that refer to the non-traditional right triangles. And then we also have the special angles of 30, 60, and 45. So let's look at a problem. Question number 11. A pine tree that is 10 meters tall is damaged in a windstorm such that it leans sideways to make an angle of 60 degrees with the ground. Represent the situation with a diagram. So we have a diagram here, 60 degrees, 10 meters, and then, um, and then what it asks is find an ex exact expression for the length of the shadow of the tree when the sun is directly overhead. So you've got some sun, shining down so that there is a shadow formed by this tree. Determine the length of that shadow. We know that because 10 meters is the hypotenuse that that shadow had better be less than 10 meters. So set it up. Cosine of 60, so again the adjacent which is the shadow, the hypotenuse which is 10, we're going to use the cosine of 60 and determine that it's x over 10. Cosine of 60 is equal to x over 10. x is equal to, ah, but wait. We cannot use cosine of 60. You cannot type cosine of 60 in your calculator. It's one of those special angles. You must know the value of that special angle. Cosine of 60 is equal to 1 over 2. So you set it up, the equation, so that it's 1 over 2 is equal to x over 10. Continuing on, you cross multiply and solve and you find out that x equals 5. Therefore, the, the tree's shadow is 5 meters. Alright, we're looking at the number 12 now. A sailboat is 12 kilometers north of the lighthouse. A motor cruiser is 12 kilometers east of the same lighthouse. 
use trigonometry, trigonometry folks, to find an exact expression of the distance between the two boats. So notice that they're both 12 kilometers, so you know, and one's going north, the other one's east, so we make a right angle triangle such that we need to find the distance between the ship and, sorry, the sailboat and the motor cruiser. So, by doing so, because it's, we need to use trigonometry, we need to have an angle. In order to find that angle, you realize that it's an isosceles triangle, so each of those angles must be 45 degrees. So we set it up. Sine of 45 is equal to 12 over D. That is what we want for this problem. You take the sine of 45, represented as 1 over root 2, is equal to 12 over D. Cross multiply, you find out that D is equal to 12 root 2. So the distance between the boats is 12 root 2 kilometers apart. All right, folks, that's everything. Here is the homework for the entire Chapter 4 and some of Chapter 5. I'll give you Chapter 5 when we get to it, but here definitely is the homework for Chapter 4. Uh, hopefully you get everything done. Take care. Talk to you soon. Have a numerical night.